All right, tonight I wanna finish this because I have things to do. And this is on my list of something to finish doing. All right, this is a thing I made years ago and it goes on my sewing machine, around my sewing machine right here for a table. And as you could tell, it's very gross and old and dirty and disgusting. I'm sure you've noticed it if I ever used it in front of you. And so I found this fabric that I like and I got my staple gun. One Christmas, Jamie said, what do you want for Christmas? I want an electric staple gun, all I want. And so I got what I wanted, thank heavens. So I'm hoping all will go well and this will run smoothly since I'm showing you. Now I cut this piece of fabric, this bigger than the size. I am not gonna take the old one off. I have batting under it, but I like it padded because I iron on it when I'm sewing and I need to press the seam. I have my little iron there and I iron on it. So I am going to use the same thing, use the same um, batting, these staples I'm hammering in because some of them were coming out. Okay, don't want them poking through and getting in my way. Okay, so next, oh, here's one. I love this little hammer. I got it at Harbor Freight, I think. And I bought one for the two little grandsons too, because what little boy doesn't want a little hammer that they can use? All right, I'm going to turn this up and I'm gonna turn it under again, like this, because I don't want the raw edge. And then I'm gonna get some straight pins right here and temporarily pin it. That one, that's not a good pin. It had my glue on it. Okay, just a minute. Should have got this out ahead of time. Okay. So, turning this under twice. Now, before you get going, make sure on this side that you have enough turnover, too. Because you don't want to run short. Sometimes I've left it real big, and when I got to the other side, then I cut it. But... This time, so I'm gonna pin this because if I had another person here to hold it for me and help me, I wouldn't need to pin it. But I don't have a person. Elf is not here and neither is my husband or any of my other grandkids. Although tomorrow night I have a house full of people spending the night again. All right, so this is the beginning. Yay. Now this has an, a thing that you can turn it more. I don't know how it works though, to get more if they shoot deeper. But I don't know which way. Plus is this way. No, it must have to go the other way. I haven't used this very much, and then when I use it again, I forget about it. So what I'll do is just take this hammer and... Oh, oh I'm, I could have killed somebody. It shot twice. <laughs> Two staples went shooting out there. That was horrible. Don't ever put your finger on the trigger unless you want to shoot. Remember that rule with your gun? Or maybe you don't know that rule. That's the rule. Don't ever put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready for it to shoot. Okay. May I say, Alex Baldwin, he had his finger on the trigger, evidently. Poor guy and all those kids and, oh, what a mess. Poor lady, dead. Oh, that one shot too. Okay. Now. I like when I can sit and do jobs. Now we're gonna pull this side taut, tight as we can. Okay. And this is kind of uneven here. So I'm gonna cut it even 
because that's just how I roll. I want it even. And this has, this is great fabric, has uh, lines on it so I can tell. And you do want to keep it a little tight this way too, like this. But when we get to the end over there, we'll pull it tight. Okay, now, okay. I'm gonna pin it here. This is gonna look so, I wonder how long I'll have it before I spill something on it. Make it look gross. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm just gonna go get some more of this fabric and recover it again so you don't ever see it. No, I, you're my video friends. I like to be up front with you. Guess what the stupid thing I did? I spilled a mess and ruined it. I like to be frank with everybody. Cause you know, you all know, I'm not perfect. I try things, doesn't work. I admit it, didn't work. Okay. This isn't have to be perfect because it's just mine. And if it's not perfect, I can always redo it again. And I made this years and years ago. So, um, it lasted this long. So, I'm sure that... Oh, I hear my husband coughing downstairs. I was going to take a video of him coughing to show people. But... I don't want to invade his privacy. Okay. Now, as you see, I have to cut out down into here and then pull it on each side and do it. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. What time is it? It's 8 o'clock. But it's, you know, part of the problem is with people, they think... Oh, it's night. Can't do anything. Of course, I don't know what my kitchen looks like downstairs. And Jamie was good enough. He made, he fried the, uh, we had pork chops and he fried them. And I made a jello. Because he hasn't had a very good, he's nauseated. And so I was, he loves plain jello. When we go to chuck Arama or those buffet places, he always gets jello. Plain jello. I'm just like, why would you get that? Gross. But that's what he likes. So anyway, he gets plain jello. Always fold the end under. You could this is how you could recover your chairs. This is how it's done. You just take the screws out and the chair bottom will fall off. And that's how you do it. So anyway, he made the pork chops and he that was nice of him. And he does, I did them last night, and oh, he does them so much, fries better. I'm not really a fry cook. You can know, there's either bakers or fry cooks. I'm not a good fry cook. He is better at it. So he did that, but I don't know what my kitchen looks like down there. But tomorrow night, my grandson, Grant, he's 17, and he's in this special singing group at the high school. And I don't really know what's going on. He just said, Grandma, can me and my friends in the group, singing group, which they're nice boys, you know, come up there and spend the night in the family room over there. And they came last night, too, and played pool over there and with some friends. So I said, I don't care. here, But here's the rules. Don't bug me. Don't sneak out. Don't break anything. And don't eat all my food. And don't, you know, anyway, he, he answered back. Okay, we promise we won't. Anyway, they won't. They're nice boys. So um, that's going to happen tomorrow night. And then Macy, she had her parents going to Rock Springs to watch the other kids. Boy, they go a lot watching those kids play the games. So they're going there. And Macy has his basketball game here. So I'm going to... She's going to spend the night here with me, too. 
which I would have not surprised if Brinley doesn't come because they're, you know, the cousins that play together. And so I might have a lot over tomorrow night. But that's fine. I don't care. That's why we have the big house for the family. If they're respectful and nice. So that's my... T oh, well, then Friday, Jamie has to go... Is going to the doctor. So there's no school Friday. Now, the um, bottom of here is like a Christmas present. You wrap the ends and the corners like a, a present. I'm not going to show this one because it is real precarious. I'll show when I get over there. Not that any of you are going to do this. I don't suspect you have one of these. But people think upholstering is really hard. I can't do it. Oh, you can too. It's not that hard. I got to stand up and use pressure on this one. Okay, because I can't hammer it in that with that stick there. My stick leg. All right. Oh, that didn't even hit. That one didn't hit the wood. That wasn't a good one. Oh, I used to have such troubles with staple gun. It made me cry. It wasn't a plug-in one. You know, it was the kind you just squeeze. Well, you got to have strong fingers to do that. And my hands aren't big and strong like my husband's. Remember, I, I, if you didn't hear that, I told him one time. He wanted me to hold this with my hands and stuff or do something, and I couldn't. I said, look at my hands compared to your hand. I said... You expect me to do that when my hand is this size and your hand is that size. So I said, if you wanted someone with this hand like yours, then you should have married a man. Oh, that shut him up right away. <laughs> so he appreciates my small hand now because, you know, felt what the alternative would be. Although his dead wife... She was real tall, which made her have bigger hands than me. And he, when he was married me, he was used to her. And he said her hands were a lot bigger than mine. Which doesn't make anybody bad or good. I'm not saying that. She played the piano. And so that was good she had a big hand. To reach an octave... You know what an octave is. You know, the keys repeat themselves. So when you hold your hand like this on the piano, you want to be able to reach the whole repeat of the key. I don't know how many keys it is. But that's an octave. And if you can't reach that whole thing, then you got to find a different way to get all of the notes. I act like I know what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. Am I out of staples? I'm out of staples. I've been using a lot. So, um, she played the piano, the ex-wife. I mean, the dead wife. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't. I still have them. That one was just caught. I have more staples in here. And so she played the piano at church. And... Um... I guess, you know, she was good at it. That was good. My mother played the organ. The whole, all my growing life, she played the organ. We always had to sit on the front row at church because our mother was up playing the organ. And then when she was done, she'd come back down and sit with us. And then my dad always sat on the stand, too because he was the clerk and he had to sit up there and count the congregation. So our mother was strict and forceful and we didn't dare be naughty. 
we weren't. Well, Shauna, my one sister, she was a hyperactive. So sometimes we'd get the look when my mother was at the organ. If we were naughty, she'd be, you know, giving us the look down there. We got, oh, we better be good. I'm hot. Take it, I'm taking my braid out. We were hot and, I mean, I'm hot now. She would give us that look and we knew we'd better behave and straighten up before she came and sat down. <laughs> so, but back then, we went to church in the morning and then we went again at night. So, on Sunday. So she didn't let us play outside Sunday afternoon because if we did, we'd get all dirty and stinky for the night meeting. So we never did play out. Sunday was a family day and we didn't play outside on Sunday because we weren't allowed to get dirty. So now we just go to church in the morning. And the youth, the teenagers, they go like on Tuesday night for the youth activities. So that's what at my church does. And I'm sure your church has church active, you know, youth activities and stuff too. And it's important for those children to have values and to go to church because I had this one friend and in my church, we don't believe in drinking alcohol. Well, um, my friend, he was a Catholic and his, he called me, he was single dad. He called me. He was so upset because his daughter got, went and got drunk, teenage daughter. And I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. She's just copying you. Because you drink. She doesn't have any. It's not wrong. How does it look so far? It's looking good. I said she doesn't have anybody telling her that it's not good for her. Or she shouldn't. Except it is against the law, I guess, too. But anyway, I said if my kids drink, then I could tell them that, you know, that's against our religion. And we don't drink because we want to be in full control of our faculties. We do not want to have a governing, plus we don't want to take any chances of becoming addicted, which you know that happens. I told my girls, don't drink. Your dad's an alcoholic and you might inherit it. You don't know. So anyway, I told him, I don't know what to tell you because sorry, but she's just copying what her parents do. All right, now I'm at the top. This is my last side. I started at 8. It's 8, 16. And look, it. I could have just sat here and watched TV and not did anything. But instead, I got something done. My most productive things I did at nighttime after my kids were in bed and stuff, you know, because you didn't get interrupted. So when I sewed for people, because I took in sewing and they'd bring me their things and crappy, ugly things they want me to sew for them. Because they don't know how to sew, so they didn't know. Uh, this fabric that won't make up like you think. This one lady, she would bring me her dad's pants and then like some camouflage fabric. She said, I want you to make a pair of pants just like these pants of my dad's, hunting pants. Those jobs were not fun, and I certainly didn't get paid as much as I should have. But I did it, because I was desperate and for money. But, and then this one lady one time, she loved um, moo-moos. You know what they are. Like a Hawaiian dress, you know, to wear around the house. My mother called them day gowns. Well, not really. My son... Oh, what if I shot through my phone? I wonder where... I'm glad I'm alone in the room. What if I shot through something like a perfume bottle? TV? I don't know. Okay. There. I'm done. 19 minutes it took me. All right. 
Oh, I don't like this corner. I'm going to put another staple right in here. And so she wanted, she asked, how much will you charge to make it for me? And I said, $10. And she goes, well, how much will it cost to make, if I have you make two of them? $20. If I have you make three, can I get a deal on it? Like, it's going to be easier for me to sew three dresses. That's three times the work. It doesn't make it faster because I have three of them. And it made me mad. It's like, I'm already giving you a break, uh, the cheapest break ever. And then you're chewing me down. And here I am, starving for money for all my kids and stuff. So guess what happened? I made her three of them for $15, probably. Anyway because I didn't want to lose the job. Okay, I probably had a water bill to pay or something. Back then, all I needed was 20 bucks to pay the water bill. So, I, would, I wouldn't have any sewing job, and I would be so upset and praying, please, Heavenly Father, get me, have someone come to the door. I need to pay this water bill. Sure enough, somebody would come. Thank you. And then I would hurry and sew it as fast as I could so I could pay the water bill. Then I would call them and say, okay, it's done. Then they wouldn't come pick it up. And I'm like, oh, please come pick it up. I hurried so I could get this money, you know. So then finally the lady would come and pick it up and I would run down. Well, no, I would have my son ride his bike down to the water company, my oldest son to go pay the water bill to save gas, probably. This one's not working right here. And so he went in to pay it, had the money and the bill. And then the lady that worked there, she's like, and you know, I don't know how old he was, probably 12. Anyway, she goes, I think I was real pregnant huge pregnant at the time and it hurt to walk. But anyway, she goes, are you sure you're old enough to be doing this and coming in to pay the your parents' water bill? And, and Chad, my son goes, I'm doing it, aren't I? So she took his money and the water bill was paid. But um, I was so sheltered growing up that I did not want my kids to be like that. Like, when I married at 18, I had never ordered food at a restaurant or paid a bill or took anything back at the store or applied for a job. I was very, very naive. And I didn't want my kids to be that way. So I made them do hard things. And, no, you go take it back to the store and get their money back. And now you see how this leg is higher because the sewing machine back here is built up. And this machine is not the original machine. My other machine is. So I have to put a book under this machine and then it raises it up. But you get the gist. And now I can iron on it and I have a new table. And it looks so nice. I'm gonna show you the, fun, the finished look. Sorry, look at, this is my Timu haul I just did. And I gotta try all those things on for you. Okay, look. Doesn't it look nice? And look what I did. I discovered something. Come with me. You can see it's nighttime. I am laying out. Remember these are from, it's dark over here. Remember these are the wash rags from Timu. And I thought these would make a really nice quilt top. So I laid them out here to see how big a baby quilt it would make. I think I'm going to do it and use them to make a baby quilt. But it doesn't have to be done right away because I have other things that I want to do. So, but I'm glad I got that project done. Look how nice it looks now when I go sewing for you guys. And it won't look like dirty, cruddy, spilt, crapo stuff. All right. Just... Now I'm going to go take a bath and go to bed because I accomplished all I wanted to today. 
Okay, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being my video friend. And I'll record over the weekend and we'll do more fun stuff. Bye.